Another one is analysis comes at the end of the data collection. I thought that was wrong. Analysis tools you decide before the data is collection. And the other one is quantitative analysis more accurate. No, that also is a myth. If that is the case, all your social sciences research is not right then. Qualitative also is equally good. Next one. Data has its own meaning. No, data does not have its own meaning unless and until you work on the data. You dissect the data and you come out with interpretations. Next one is stating limitations will analyze, I mean, will weaken your results. I remember once I think an ICFI faculty presented a result paper. She had 12 limitations and she had two conclusions. So somebody said, like, if you have, what are the value you are adding when you have so many limitations and only two conclusions there? So if I don't give those limitations, people will make wrong interpretations of the conclusions there. So it doesn't undermine when you give your limitations. And at your RD stage, progress stage, please don't talk about limitations. Limitations you talk only at a pre-submission stage. That is the stage where you realize, I could have done this thing, I didn't do it. Maybe this could be someone who would find a weakness in my thesis there, let me state it myself. Are you getting it there? So don't be in a hurry to do the limitations at your RD stage. Then the next one, computer analysis is always easier. I don't tell it. Few things can be done manually also. Now you must know which tools to apply. You know, if you want to figure out how many people have, you know, when I do a Google form for my students, for the internals, it tells me in detail how many have said A, B, C, D. I can work out the percentages. And then if I want to work out out of 100, how much does it stand? Then I want to figure out on an average how much is it. I want to figure out one value which divides the entire set of data into two equal halves. Then I do the median. I want to find a modal class. My footwear is 9. My shoulder size is 46. From 50 I'd come down, that's another extreme. The thing what I'm trying to tell you is what is the modal class? Mode. And you know another thing I find most of the research is going wrong is for reasons best known to them, they collect age, they collect gender, they collect income, education level, caste, religion and all that. They only work out a few bar charts, few pie charts and tell, in my analysis, people belong to this, this class. And they don't work out what is called as cross tabs. You're not going for some extra data. Within the data that you collected, you can probe further for the same question asked to girls and to the boys, how did they answer? Based on age level, did the answer vary? Based on religion, did the response vary? Based on the caste, did the response vary? So that is where you talk about cross tabs. Okay? Next one, standard deviation, other things is fine. Uh, further, I think one step before this, ma, it says you have a lot of, you know, this is what I wanted to figure out. Nowadays, many researchers have access to software which will perform whatever statistical test the researcher wants to perform. But the computer does not have a brain to select which test to perform. It goes by your instructions. So you will have to check the suitability of the tool. So it is based on the normality. It is based on your objective. It is based on the nature of data. That is what is more important. And there it says, in other words, they don't have the ability to match the correct statistical test to the correct situation. So matching the correct statistical test to the correct situation, whose job is it? Is it of a computer? Is it of the software? It is your job. And my effort was trying to tell this to you. Next slide, ma. Next one. Further. Again, uh, okay. I think I'm coming a little more closer. A few more slides, I'm done. I'm talking about a nominal ordinal. What am I calling it as? Qualitative. And I'm calling interval ratio as quantitative. For qualitative, we use non-parametric tests. For quantitative, we use parametric tests. Next slide. Now, we have some examples coming. Gender, it's nominal. Race. Are you an Aryan, are you a Dravidian, are you an Asian, European, an American, or a Fiji guy, or an African? 
I mean, it's only classification. I mean, your marital status, married or unmarried? I mean, you're 25 years or a golden jubilee married? No. Married or not? Do you get that? And then you're talking about whether the tumor has reoccurred. When I took my example, there can't be a vegetative state. You're alive or dead. There can't be a between coma stage here. Next one. Ordinal. Uh, it talks about, you know, this is something which happened to me in our health center. When I said about my feet problem. Exact words. If I give you a scale of 10, there is your pain. And I told him six. Then he did some tube light with infrared rays put on my knee and it gave me a little kind of relief. I said, come out two or three days, we'll check. If not, you'll have to go for some other test, he told. I mean, you tell about your pain. If it is too painful, you also add an adjective and you say it is excruciating pain in English. Unbearable pain. It's painful, but it is bearable. I'm talking about the rating you'll give to it. Do you get what I'm saying? Licorice scale goes about coming in order. What you have seen yesterday. Too. The next slide. Now, interval, I said about temperature, maximum, minimum. I gave an example. You can find range and other things. The ratio, any of these things would come into it. Next one. Now, did I tell you a little while ago this word? What does uh, nominal and ordinal lead to? And uh, non-parametric kind of a thing. I said qualitative. And when I said interval ratio, quantitative, and leads to what kind of studies there? Parametric. Next slide. So, you know, two branches of statistics. What are they? Descriptive and inferential. Descriptive, it is all about frequency, percentages, measure of the middle value. That's nothing but median. Or measures of variation. Anyone will tell me very quickly, standard deviation, range, variance. I mean, all those things come under the measures of variation. And I've told you, inferentially, you have two things under it, parametric and non-parametric. Next slide, Ma. Now, the qualitative part, you have ordinal, binary. You know what is binary? There are only two responses. Yes, no, pass, fail, live, dead. There are only two things. Like in binary, we say 0, 1 in computer kind of a thing. And in Quantitative, we said discrete and continuous. What I said, discrete, no decimals, no fractions. When I say continuous, it can also involve decimal-related figures in it. Then we go to the next one. So I don't want to spend time on this further. Further again, more, more. Okay, scales I'm talking about, one next to this, yeah. Now please look carefully. If the data has got a nature, I mean, now I have, I think, uh, MATLAB is a software. They give you summary, uh, what is called as tools of analysis. That is what I'm going to take you through with another four or five slides and close my class. If I can take a few queries, well and good, and take a break and you'll have a class after that, right? Now, the thing is, I said the nature of the data is nominal chi-square. Ordinal, I do what? Non-parametric. I told Pearson, is parametric, Spearman is non-parametric. Can you get that? A small r, you should have a flow from what I started. If it is interval, you'll ask a question. What is that question? Is the measure normally distributed? If the answer to it is yes, you'll go for what? Parametric. If the answer to it is no, then you'll go for non-parametric. What is that? Man with me, you test, H test, Wilcoxon t-test, kruskal valis there's another thing. These are the things that you do. Nature of the data. And uh, you see your Pearson. And what do you see here? Spearman. That is the difference that you have. Next slide, Ma. Now, there are a few more things which will tell you that it is one sample, you have a sign test or a... I mean, you, you find equivalence of... this one thing that I want you to remember. When Murthy sir is speaking or... You have done with the codes, and when you are working on your own, please remember these things. I've given a list. I think while telling, I told about Kolmogorov, KS it is called. You have the parametric and the non-parametric equivalent. One sample t-test, it is sign test and Wilcoxon. Two sample, you have this unpaired, then ANOVA. Did I tell Kruskal Valis? Then you have two-way ANOVA with repeated measure. We call it the John Curie Friedman. And then you have Spearman 
and there it is Pearson R. Can you see that? It is parametric and non-parametric equivalents that are there. Next slide. Now, I, I think this is my core thing, which I have to keep my promise with what uh, I did to Steve, sir. I told you something about 1.96, 2.58, 1.645, I didn't tell that. But ultimately, if you're using an Excel, you're using an SPSS, your output is going to be in this form, which is p-value. The p-value you get, look at it, this is another thing. It all depends whether your level of significance is 1% or 5%. If you get a p-value which is less than 0 0.01, the result is highly significant. What do you say? Reject the? So when you reject null, what happens? Order gets accepted. Look at another thing, which is a range. You say it is... What? Greater than or equal to 0 0.01, but less than 0 0.05. What do you say? Result is significant. What do you say? Reject the null hypothesis. Another one. What is that? It is 0 0.05. You say result is not significant. Do not reject the null Do not reject. This is a little confusing language. Do not reject is nothing but accept the null hypothesis. And I tell you, today evening, sit, ruminate, read the slide five, six, seven times, close the book, take a white paper, and figure out, are you able to write what is this 5%, 1%? Are you able to say that less than that, greater than that, do you accept, reject, null? This is something which you have to drive in. Because your entire SPSS output, your Excel output, 